I'm trying something a bit different this week, since recently I haven't been finding too many shows I'm willing to go on a long rant about, and instead have been getting the urge to share some of my thoughts about writing and storytelling in general. So pull up a grindy game, start doing some homework, or put me on your car speaker system. There won't be much to follow visually in this video unless you like the game I'm playing in the background. Without further ado, enjoy the video. Immortality has always been a bit of an obsession of mine. Specifically, what someone would be like if they were immortal, and how it would affect them. And a lot of stories have their takes on this. Immortality is a theme in a lot of tales in general. You've got so many generic Disney-type villains seeking immortality and godhood, that the implications of being immortal has become a literal skit by Solid JJ. Recently, I had to look at the subject a little deeper since I've been writing a story of my own. Specifically, how does a character who's been through the constant up and downs of immortality act? Because when you look at such a thing at the surface level, you might think that the character would act jaded, maybe very old-fashioned, has some habits that haven't worn off from hundreds or thousands of years ago, and just feels very out of touch in general. And... you'd be right. At least partially. It's definitely not hard to imagine that a character who's been around for so long and has been through more than anything anyone can imagine would probably be a little bit out of touch. However, if you look at it a little deeper, you start realizing just what being immortal means. And this would be what Solid JJ covers in their skit. An immortal character doesn't just have all those years behind them, but an infinite amount of time in front of them at all times. Any experience that they've had becomes infinitesimally small compared to what is to come. Because they don't have the very thing that gives most mortal characters their purpose, that being mortality. And the thought alone is enough to bring about a wave of pretty substantial existential dread. Just imagining that every person you know and love would grow old and pass ahead of you, again and again and again, with no possible end in sight, is a pretty terrifying thought. And that's why the usual answer you'd get when you ask someone the question of would you ever take it is no. And that's pretty fair. Being immortal essentially catapults you straight out of the natural cycle of things placing you in a state where time moves for everyone except for you. Especially for a social animal like humans, the idea of being so isolated is downright torturous to even think about. And in a lot of cases in fiction, you see immortal characters that end up going insane, detaching themselves from the world, or just searching for a way to die in general. But then you get cases like Free Run, where the character still actively interacts with the world, keeps up with the times, and still enjoys life just as much as everyone else. And I guess for this one you can make the argument that Freerun does technically have a lifespan. It's just so ridiculously long that she's functionally immortal in the eyes of a human being. But since that's kind of a cheap answer to how those characters are designed, I'd like to introduce the concept of Memento Mori. And if you know what those two words mean, you've probably just given me the biggest eye roll you've ever done in your life. Because memento mori roughly means remember that you will die, which in this case cannot apply at all because the literal baseline of an immortal character is that they will never die. So in the context of immortal characters, I'd like to twist the meaning a bit and say it means remember that there will be death, which essentially means enjoy every moment you have because eventually those things will come to an end. Once a character has accepted death as part of the cycle, and not as much of a devastating event as we humans usually think of it as, that opens up for a bunch of ways for that character to develop. This is the part that is usually very difficult for a lot of people to grasp, and what leads to most people answering, I'd rather just not be immortal, because as a species, we are never free from death, and death is one of the greatest fears and driving forces of every living being. The mere existence of death brings the need to survive, the need to reproduce, and the want to self-actualize. A being without death would have none of these things. So then, the conclusion a lot of people come to is that an immortal character would be incredibly bored with their situation. And this take on the trope is also very common, especially within the realm of godlike villains. People who have just gotten so bored that they've decided to just do shit like take over the world or kill people for fun. And these characters tend to work very well as a foil for the main character. A character who is all-powerful but lacks all passion, against a character who is weak but burning with passion. But my personal favorite take on the characterization of an immortal character 
is a little different. If you've kept up with recent meme culture, you'd have come across the phrase, one must imagine Sisyphus happy, a phrase that suggests that the struggle of pushing a boulder up a hill eternally is enough to fill a man's heart. And I'd like to apply this in the context of an immortal character alongside my previously twisted definition of Memento Mori. An immortal character doesn't have the constraints of mortality binding them, sure. They might be bored, depressed, or both. But there will always be one thing keeping them moving forward. I brought up Freerun earlier, so let's use her as an example here as well. Freerun's Sisyphus Boulder is her collecting magic. Her one mundane goal in life is to collect every single magic in the world. But since more magic is being made all the time just due to different humans needing different magic for different things, her journey will never have an end despite everyone around her eventually meeting theirs. This one thing keeps her content in life, and that's why we don't see her spiraling into a deep depression or getting so bored that she starts firing missiles at civilians. This, in my mind, is the perfect way of writing an immortal character. A character that has their mind set to one thing, pushing that boulder up the hill constantly despite there being no end in sight. An immortal character doesn't need recognition, doesn't need to make an impact, and doesn't have any inherent purpose in life. However, as long as they have a constant in their lives that isn't just themselves, they will not appear to be any less human than any other character you put them next to. The immortal character defines its own purpose, and sticks to that purpose no matter what happens. They know that everything around them will eventually come to an end, and they've come to terms with it. They will just continue along their journey, content with every moment along the way. And as long as they keep going, the cycle will simply start anew. Now, that isn't to say any of the other ways of writing an immortal character are wrong or inferior in any way. A depressed character could work very well for a character just coming to terms with their immortality. Someone who's seen everything that they've taken as a constant wither and crumble away and is thrown into a seemingly hopeless cycle. A bored character also works. Someone who's lived for so long and been through so much that they can't help but not be able to form attachments or sympathize with people. Even outside of the context of a villain, a character like this is the perfect path to go down if you really want to create a tragic immortal character without outright stating the tragedy of the situation. However, the last approach, the Sisyphus approach as I call it, is the way to go if you want to draw hope from the tragedy. To convey the message that no matter how futile the struggle, the mere act of struggling gives one's life purpose. At the end of the day, it all comes down to what you want to convey with the character's story. I just think that the combination of tragedy and hope in the Sisyphus approach, when done correctly, really ends up hitting a lot harder than you'd expect, and that's just what I love to see in a story. With that, my name is Sue. If you like this kind of content where I kind of just talk at you with some random game in the background, do leave a like and subscribe. I will see you all next time.